John Miller, a 55-year-old janitor, was a pillar of the Dorchester neighborhood in Boston, Massachusetts. Known for his unwavering kindness and humility, John's weathered hands and gentle smile reflected a life dedicated to helping others. Every morning, he meticulously cleaned the grand halls of the old Boston Public Library, finding solace in the routine and the quiet hum of the city waking up around him. On a crisp autumn morning, as the leaves painted the streets in vibrant hues, John's day took an unexpected turn. Michael Thompson, a 42-year-old millionaire businessman, was hurrying through the bustling streets of Dorchester. Dressed in a tailored navy suit and polished shoes, Michael exuded ambition and a certain aloofness that often isolated him from those around him. His mind was preoccupied with the looming merger that could either make or break his career, making him oblivious to his surroundings. As Michael navigated the crowded sidewalk, his attention was fixed on his phone, reviewing last-minute details for a crucial meeting. The traffic light turned green, and without looking up, he stepped onto the crosswalk. At that precise moment, a delivery truck, distracted by a malfunctioning signal, sped through the intersection. Time seemed to slow as the truck barreled towards Michael. Reacting instinctively, John dashed forward, his strong build propelling him with remarkable speed. He grabbed Michael by the arm, pulling him back just as the truck skidded to a halt inches away. The impact rattled the air, and a collective gasp echoed from the onlookers. Michael stumbled, his briefcase slipping from his grasp and tumbling onto the pavement, paper scattering like leaves in the wind. Heart pounding, John steadied himself, ensuring Michael was unharmed. The chaos of the moment left both men breathless. Michael, usually composed and detached, looked shaken and vulnerable for the first time. He stared at John, a mix of surprise and gratitude in his eyes, before regaining his composure and thanking him with a firm handshake. As the crowd dispersed and the truck driver apologized profusely, the seeds of an unexpected connection were planted. John returned to his duties, but the encounter lingered in his mind, unaware of the profound impact it would soon have on both their lives. The following morning, Michael Thompson sat in his opulent office atop the tallest skyscraper in Boston, the city sprawling beneath him like a living tapestry. Yet, despite the panoramic view and the urgent buzz of his executive team preparing for the merger, his mind was elsewhere. He couldn't shake the image of John Miller, the 55-year-old janitor whose quick actions had saved his life. Michael was a man driven by ambition, every move calculated for maximum gain, but this encounter had unsettled something deep within him. Determined to express his gratitude, Michael instructed his assistant to find out everything about his rescuer. By midday, he learned that John worked at the Boston Public Library. Forgoing his usual lunch meeting, Michael decided to visit the library personally. John was shelving books in the history section when he noticed Michael approaching. Surprised, he wiped his hands on his worn uniform and offered a warm smile. Mr. Thompson, good to see you. Is everything all right? Yes, thanks to you, Michael replied, extending his hand. I wanted to thank you properly for what you did. John shook his hand firmly. I was just glad to help. Anyone would have done the same. Michael raised an eyebrow. I assure you, not everyone would risk themselves for a stranger. Please, allow me to offer you a reward. Anything you need. John chuckled softly. I appreciate the offer, but I didn't help you expecting a reward. Michael was taken aback. Surely there's something I can do. You've earned it. John's eyes softened. Well, if you're insistent, perhaps consider donating to the community center. They could use the support. Michael hesitated unaccustomed to such humility. That's noble of you. But I was hoping to do something for you directly. John glanced around the library, the quiet sanctum that had become his second home. I've got all I need right here. But the kids at the center, they have so much potential. A little help could go a long way. Michael studied him, noticing the frayed edges of his uniform, the lines etched deeply into his face, a map of years spent working hard without complaint. 
You've worked here long, he asked. Over 30 years, John replied with pride. Books have a way of keeping the mind young. Michael nodded, a hint of envy flickering in his eyes. I can't remember the last time I read for pleasure. Maybe it's time you did, John suggested gently. There's more to life than meetings and mergers. Michael smirked, spoken like someone who doesn't have shareholders to appease. John's expression turned thoughtful. Success isn't just measured in profits. Sometimes, it's in the lives we touch. The comment struck a chord. Michael shifted uncomfortably. You speak as if you know me. John smiled. I see a man who carries a heavy burden. Sometimes, lightening someone else's load can lighten your own. Michael was silent for a moment. You're an interesting man, Mr. Miller. Just John, please. All right, John. If I can't reward you personally, then I'll make that donation. That would mean a lot to many people, John replied gratefully. As Michael left the library, he couldn't help but reflect on the stark contrast between them. John's contentment without material wealth challenged his own relentless pursuit of more. The humility and compassion John displayed were qualities Michael hadn't valued in a long time. That evening, in his penthouse overlooking the city lights, Michael poured himself a drink and pondered John's words. The silence of his luxurious home felt heavier than usual. He thought about the community center and the impact his donation could make. For the first time in years, he considered the possibility that success could be measured differently. Meanwhile, John returned home to his modest apartment where his wife, Margaret, awaited him. Her health had been declining, but her spirits remained high. You look thoughtful, she remarked as he walked in. I met with the man I told you about, John replied, sitting beside her. He offered me a reward. Margaret squeezed his hand. And what did you tell him? The same thing I always say. There's more joy in giving than receiving. She smiled warmly. That's why I fell in love with you. Unbeknownst to both men, their lives were beginning to intertwine in ways that would soon reveal profound truths and lead to unexpected rewards. As the days unfolded, Michael found himself drawn back to the community center repeatedly. The laughter of the children and the warmth of the environment were a stark contrast to his sterile corporate world. One afternoon, while admiring a mural painted by local kids, he noticed an old photo hanging on the wall. It was a faded snapshot of volunteers rebuilding homes after a devastating fire decades ago in Boston. There, among the workers, stood a younger John Miller, his face smeared with soot but illuminated by a genuine smile. A memory flickered in Michael's mind. He recalled being a boy of 12 when a fire swept through his childhood neighborhood, leaving many families homeless. His own family had been among them, saved and supported by kind strangers who asked for nothing in return. Could John have been one of them? Determined to uncover the truth, Michael visited the library the next day. He found John organizing a shelf of worn books, his eyes crinkling at the corners as he greeted Michael. Back again so soon? John asked pleasantly. Yes, Michael replied, a hint of urgency in his voice. I saw a photo at the community center. Were you involved in the Maple Street fire recovery about 30 years ago? John paused, his gaze distant. Maple Street. Yes, I was. That was a tough time for many. We did what we could to help rebuild. Michael's heart raced. I lived on Maple Street. My family lost everything. A man helped us rebuild our home. But I never knew his name. John looked closely at Michael, realization dawning. Your family, the Thompsons? Michael nodded slowly. Yes, I think you saved us. John smiled humbly. I just offered a helping hand. Your parents were good people. A surge of emotion washed over Michael. All these years, and I had no idea. You've saved me twice now. John chuckled softly. Life has a funny way of bringing people together. Feeling a mix of gratitude and disbelief, Michael said, You changed our lives. Because of you, I was able to pursue my education and build my career. John waved a dismissive hand. You did that on your own. 
I just provided a bit of support when it was needed. Determined to repay the kindness, Michael pressed on. Please, let me do something for you this time. Anything you need. John shook his head. Your success is thanks enough. I'm content with what I have, but Michael couldn't let it rest. That evening, he dug deeper into John's life and learned that Margaret's health was deteriorating, the medical bills piling up. The next day, he approached John with a proposal. I heard about Margaret's condition. I have connections with some of the best doctors. Allow me to help. John hesitated. I can't accept that. We've managed this long. Please, Michael implored. Let me do this. For both of you, seeing the earnestness in Michael's eyes, John finally agreed. All right, for Margaret. In the weeks that followed, Margaret received top-tier medical care. Her health improved dramatically, and the light returned to her eyes. One afternoon, as she and John strolled to a park bathed in the golden glow of sunset, she turned to him. Who would have thought that your kindness all those years ago would come back to us like this? John smiled thoughtfully. It's like I've always said, what goes around comes around. Meanwhile, Michael felt a profound shift within himself. Witnessing the impact of his actions filled him with a sense of fulfillment he hadn't felt in years. He began volunteering at the community center, not out of obligation, but out of genuine desire to contribute. One evening... As Michael and John were closing up the center after a busy day, Michael remarked, You know, you've taught me more about success than any business deal ever could. John looked at him curiously. How so? By showing me that real wealth isn't measured in dollars, but in the lives we touch, Michael replied sincerely. John placed a hand on his shoulder. That's a lesson worth more than any fortune. Their eyes met, a mutual respect passing between them. In that moment, both men understood that their lives had been irrevocably changed, not by chance, but by the simple, powerful acts of kindness that connected them. In the days following the grand reopening of the Miller Thompson Community Center, the impact of John and Michael's collaboration was felt throughout Dorchester. The once-overlooked neighborhood buzz with renewed energy as children attended new classes. Families participated in community events and opportunities flourished where there had been few. One sunny afternoon, John stood outside the center, watching a group of kids enthusiastically paint a mural depicting unity and hope. Margaret joined him, her cheeks rosy with health. It's beautiful, isn't it? She remarked, slipping her hand into his. More than I ever imagined, John replied, his eyes reflecting the vibrant colors before them. Just then, Michael approached, a contented smile on his face. I see the art class as a hit, he noted. Thanks to your idea to bring in local artists, John acknowledged. You've done so much for this place. Michael shook his head modestly. We did this together. You showed me what truly matters. Turning to face him fully, John said, You know, when I pulled you out of the way of that truck, I never expected anything in return. But you've given us more than we could have hoped for. Michael's gaze softened, and you've given me a new purpose. For years, I chase success, but it feels hollow compared to this. A young girl ran up to them, holding out a drawing. Mr. Miller, Mr. Thompson, look. I drew the two of you. They laughed gently as they examined the crayon portrait. Two figures standing side by side beneath a rainbow. It's wonderful, John praised. Thank you, Lily. As she skipped back to her friends, Michael mused, out of the mouths of babes. Indeed, John agreed. Sometimes it takes a child's perspective to see things clearly. The sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the center. Michael took a deep breath. John, I've been thinking about expanding this model to other communities in need. What do you say we take this partnership further? John considered the proposal. It sounds ambitious. Maybe, Michael admitted, but with your heart and my resources, we could make a real difference. A slow smile spread across John's face. Then let's do it. Let's spread the kindness. They stood together. Two men from different worlds united by acts of compassion. 
The challenges ahead were many, but they faced them with a shared conviction that kindness could change lives. As twilight embraced the city, Margaret joined them, and the three gazed out at the neighborhood, their neighborhood, filled with gratitude for the journey that had brought them here. The rewards they reaped were not the ones they might have expected, but they were, without a doubt, the most valuable. Their story became a testament to the power of empathy and the profound impact that simple acts of kindness could have, echoing through the lives of countless others.